Okay, today we have with us Dr. Grace Magner, who's lectured in Golden Age Literature at Trinity College Dublin and also UCD. Welcome, Grace. Thank you very much. And as it's World Book Day today, the 23rd of April, she's going to talk about one of the greatest Spanish writers of all time, Miguel de Cervantes. So um, Don Quixote is probably one of his most famous works and it's one of the most influential works of literature from the Spanish Golden Age and the entire Spanish literary canon. Mm. Like, Which writers do you think have been most influenced by his work? Mm. I think there are a vast number of writers, but I'm, I'm just going to pick out a few. Um, a contemporary of his, Shakespeare, obviously liked Cervantes because he wrote a play called Cardenio, which has been lost. And this is based on one of the interpolated stories in Book One of Don Quixote. Um, in fact, um, there used to be, um, in the seminar room in UCD, um, a, a cartoon by Chumi Chumet, who was a, 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 a cartoonist. I'm betraying my age by mentioning him. And in it, you had two gentlemen. One was obviously meant to be Cervantes, and one was Shakespeare. And Cervantes is saying, in un lugar de la mancha, de cuyo nombre no quiero recordarme. And the other gentleman was saying, no te creo. And, <laughs> and um, we, we thought that was very funny, because um, Cervantes is very, very interested in the whole notion of plausibility, verisimilitude. It's a literary precept of the time that he's at great pains to try and comply with in, in his works particularly in Don Quixote. Um, it's not the same as, uh, if you like, it's, it's a, a, a critic, um, Torrente Ballester, coined the term la realidad suficiente, which is, um, I suppose, um, enough reality to kind of keep people happy. But it's not the sort of, if you like, the photographic, the very detailed reality you find in the 19th century. But it is a step forward. It is a step towards um, what we now, to a certain expect, in some novels, anyway. Um, obviously, he influenced very much the, the 18th century English writers, um, uh, uh, Stern, Fielding, and some of the women as well. Um, uh, uh, Charlotte Lennox's The, um, the Female Quixote uh, is sort of influenced Jane Austen in North, Ang North Ang Anger Abbey. And you find amongst some of the other, you find, for example, in The Mill and the Floss, you find characters who are trying to escape from um, a, a, an unpleasant reality, usually a patriarchal society which gives them no freedom, into, into their imagination, into the world of literature. And that, of course, is what Don Quixote does too. He lives as if he were um, a character in um, a romance of chivalry, and he can ignore the nasty reality around him and refuses to do so constantly. <laughs> Um, and then I suppose in the, in the 20th century, um, uh, y you have Borges, um, uh, 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 you have um, Milan Kundera, um, his art of the novel. And I think that's particularly interesting because Cervantes was fascinated with the whole art of writing. And he, he instead of writing a theoretical work, what he does is he dramatizes um, his, his notions on the novel through characters, in, particularly in book one. And of course, the, um, the great uh, seminal work on that is that by Professor Ted Riley, who used to teach in Trinity, <laughs> get a bit of plug in there. Um, and that is still regarded as being very important. There have been other works, Felix Martinet Bonatti's um, La Poetica, I, I can't remember the exact title, but it is the poetics of the novel as well. And I think that um, you know, Cervantes is uh, his, his, whole, his whole use of metafiction, where you know, he lures you into his um, artistic world, and then somebody jumps up and says, this is only a story, you know, this, isn't a real, this isn't real life. And he does that very effectively, um, in the Quixote particularly. <laughs> Um, a lot of his work seems to be about adventure, you know, stories about gypsies mm. and pirates. Mm. Um, were these taken from his own life experiences? Well, there are obviously two things that, that are, are very, that stand out. Um, in, in, in Don Quixote, you have La Historia del Cautivo, the captive's tale. And this is set in Algeria, and of course, everybody knows that Cervantes, on his way back from uh, sort of behaving or, or fighting very bravely as a soldier in the army of... Um, a second, <laughs> had to think there, um, um, was, was captured by pirates and he was brought to Algeria where he lived for five years. Um, and a, a lot of his experiences there are reflected in the Historia del Cautivo and one of the characters, in fact, you know, I think has his name. Um, 
Uh, Maria Antonia Garces has written a book called Cervantes in Algiers, and she argues that the trauma that Cervantes experienced in um, Algiers is something that he was writing out of his system for the rest of his life. I, not sure that I fully accept that, but it's, it's an interesting idea. She herself, I think, had been captured um, uh, and had you know, been in captivity herself for some time, so she was very interested in the whole theory of, of trauma. But I think probably one of the great uh, sort of characteristics of Cervantes is his enormous tolerance and his, you know, his refusal to judge people, to accept people from all walks of life. And even uh, in La Storia del Cautivo, there are characters who behave very badly, but you know, he can sometimes find sort of uh, a redeeming trait in virtually sort of all characters. Um, and then, of course, also he spent time in prison, and that may have helped him to sort of learn the, the um, jargon of um, criminals, the germania, which he shows, which he is, he's aware of in, in the, um, the uh, scene in part, part one, when um, uh, Don Quixote meets the, the galley slaves and he has conversations with them, and he, he is very naive, has led, led a very sheltered existence, and he doesn't understand the hermania, their jargon. And of course, you find this as well in his exemplary novella, um, uh, Rinconetti e Cortadillo. So, you know, he, I suppose, um, that is probably reflected. But I think also his way of life, when he spent so many years traveling around Andalusia, sort of gathering taxes in, uh, you know, first for the Armada, um, and he would have meant people from every walk of life. I, I suppose another thing as well, um, he was a great lover of, of literary sort of um, tertulias and would have taken part in them in, you know, wherever he was, when he was in Italy as well. And that probably also would have certainly in his, you know, because he's very aware of all the different genres of prose fiction at the time, and these are reflected. He experiments with them in Don Quixote. Um, and he also experiments with them in that he writes in all the different genres. His first published work is a novella pastoril. Well, um, maybe his poem to um, is a, uh, Isabel de Valois, um, maybe his first published work. Um, but then he wrote very many plays, and in fact, two of his plays also reflect his experiences in Algiers, the El Trato de Argel y los Baños de Argel. Um, he uh, wrote then um, his Christian romance, his last work, Los Trabajos de Persiles y Seques Mundo. So he's experimenting, in, and he wrote, of course, um, El Viaje al Parnaso, which is a, you know, a satirical poem, a very funny satirical poem, where he has a swipe at some of his contemporaries. Um, and so I, I think maybe um, his experience in, in literature, really, and, but I think as well his absolute fascination for, for, for literature, his love of literature. Um, um, people, there, there is a scene in, um, uh, the, in Don Quixote when you have this very dramatic sort of uh, scene where um, the, the text disappears. And so somebody is wandering around um, uh, looking for the continuation of the text. And he's in Toledo. And he steps on a piece of paper and he picks it up. And of course, this is part of the continuation. But what Cervantes says at that, he says, um, I, I love reading everything, even the bits of paper I find in the street. So I think maybe um, his, his whole fascination, his love of literature in all its forms, obviously, is reflected in his own work. <laughs> <laughs> and his work is still as popular today as when he was first published. Mm -hmm. like what makes his work so relatable to others, do you think? Um, well, um, I'm talking probably too much about Don Quixote, but I think Don Quixote is probably his most popular work, um, although um, people are now rediscovering his plays and um, they're finding, uh, at the time, um, for a long time, people thought, oh, Cervantes is a great novelist. His plays really aren't up to much. But people now are going back, and they're finding they're much more complex and much maybe um, uh, closer to sort of our, our taste in, 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 in drama in the 21st century than people used to thought, used, used to think. But um, I, I, if, you, if you look at Don Quixote, I think it's the enormous humanity 
um, of the characters you meet, and you meet so many, and the fascinating developing relationship between Don Quixote and Sancho, um, which um, initially, you know, um, uh, Sancho is derived from um, the squire in probably Gandalin, the squire from Amadis de Gaula, and Don Quixote would like to be like Amadis and is constantly trying to imitate him in the hopes by imitating him exactly he will become like him. Um, but they gradually get to know one another and they see one another's weaknesses and they begin to talk like one another a little bit by, by the end. And I think, you know, the endless dialogues between them, I think, is, 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 is fascinating. It's also enormously funny. And the more you know about 17th century Spain, the funnier it is. I think that the relationship with Don Quixote and Sancho um, at the time was considered to be, well, people just laughed. But then later generations saw far more in it. Um, and then uh, the generation of 98 saw very much uh, Don Quixote and Sancho as, if you like, between them um, uh, being the quintessential um, Spanish character that um, Sancho represented the earthiness, the down-to-earthness, and then Don Quixote, the spiritual, the, um, uh, and the two of them together, um, to a certain extent, represent all that is endurable, all that is, all that is specifically Spanish. And um, Unamuno went so far as to say that um, Don Quixote and Sancho were like Christ and, and Saint Peter, which is probably carrying things a little bit too far. Obviously, writers are, find it a sort of an endless source of, 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 of um, different narrative techniques which um, they would like to imitate, would, would like to um, use themselves, um, and I suppose they're the main, the main things. And the word quixotic has officially entered the English lexicon, yes. meaning exceedingly idealistic and taken from you know, the famous protagonist mm -hmm. of the novel, Don Quixote himself. Um, do you think Cervantes would have been surprised by this? Well, whether he's surprised or not, some people, saw, particularly the Romantics, saw um, uh, Cervantes, saw, saw Don Quixote as, a, if you like, a spiritual autobiography of Cervantes, and they looked at Cervantes' own life. And Cervantes um, was um, a man of enormous courage. He, 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 he also, I suppose, um, embodied the, the Renaissance ideal of the soldier poet, um, fascinated by literature, writing uh, all the time. But at the same time, he fought, as we know, with the Battle of Lepanto and did it at a time when he was sort of ill. He had a high fever, but he fought and was, was wounded. Um, and when he was in North Africa, he, he was quixotic in the sense that he attempted four escapes and um, any of them could have led to his execution. Um, and yet, you know, he refused to, to sort of just lie down under his imprisonment. He, was, he, he did make all those different attempts. So I, I think that probably he was quixotic in his own life. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for talking with yes, us today. Not at all.